In today's video, we're checking out this. It is the Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt 18 volt solar panel. We're going to see how well it charges, talk a little bit about the specs, and uh, yeah, let you know what I think about it. Okay, so this is it. This is the box that the Jackery Solar Saga 100 what 18 volt solar panel comes in. As per my Jackery video, I bought this myself. This isn't something I got free from Jackery. I talked a little bit about why I decided to buy it because it is quite an expensive solar panel. But as you can see here, not as uh, sexy packaging as the, the Jack Explorer 500 came in, but we'll take it out of the box and show you what's inside and talk about kind of how it works and then run a couple of tests. So if we open up the box here, we have the solar panel inside with some bubble wrap. Pop that down to one side, pop this over there. We also have um, a little bit of material or paper materials in there. So comes with two years warranty as standard, same with the Jacker Explorer. Um, same as uh, actually in here, I didn't find it at the time, but there's a little thing that you can extend the warranty for an additional 12 months. So three years warranty on both of the products, bit of information about the warranty stuff, and then a little product manual that talks a little bit about the, the specifications and kind of how to look after things, which is uh, pretty good. Um, so yes, the panel itself. So as mentioned, this is a 100 watt, 18 volt uh, solar panel from Jackery. It's paired to go really well with the Jackery products. Obviously you can use other solar panels, but it, you know they've designed it to work well um, with their product. In terms of the dimensions, when it's folded like it is now, we've got um, 61 centimeters long, uh, about 53.5 centimeters wide and uh, about three and a half centimeters in terms of its thickness. When we fold out, obviously it doubles in size, so about 122 centimeters long, um, and obviously the same width and the thick the thickness goes down to about um, two centimeters. So pretty good. The material's like a, a nylon-y type material, I think is the best way. I'll explain it with a little rubberized handle that is um, magnetized, which helps keep it closed. It doesn't have a case or a bag or anything that it goes in, but it's um, pretty robust in itself. You see on the front here, there is a Velcro foot that pops out, which makes it also easy to set up. And we have the same on the other side of a Velcro foot, along with this kind of, I don't know the name of the material. It's like a, it's like a waterproofy type material, um, but as mentioned, this isn't waterproof. I think it's IP55, which originally means it's certified that it's dust proof and everything. So you're not gonna get dust uh, inside here once it's sealed, there's a pretty good seal and it is somewhat water resistant. But again, Jackery don't recommend you leave it out in the water. If we look inside here, I'll show you what we have. So this is the version three of the Solar Saga 100. I didn't realize that when I ordered it, I actually thought it was version two. I actually wasn't even aware that um, version three had come out. So version two has uh, the USB connectors kind of up here somewhere. Um, and then like a little port opened up over here that had the connector to connect it back to the jacket, which we'll speak about in a moment. But here means that obviously these ports are away from dust, uh, dirt and rain, and you can put an iPad and phone and stuff in here keep it zipped up whilst it's charging. So on here we have a USB-A and a USB-C port, which is good that we have USB-C here. Still odd we don't have it on the Jackery, in my opinion. Then we have a, I think it's about two, just over two and a half meters, about nine foot um, cable that connects back to the Jackery. So remember, the Jackery has uh, an MPPT charging module in there for solar. So you plug this in with the eight mil uh, DC port on here. That's one thing that I'm a little bit frustrated about that they've done with this version three. The version two, which again, I thought I was getting, 
has this cable but connected into uh, an Anderson connector. So it's got a little Anderson output that then you plug this um, DC connector in and obviously with the Anderson connector makes it more versatile and you can connect it to other solar controllers to complement an existing solar setup. So one thing I'll show you a bit later in the video, I purchased a Goal Zero um, DC extension lead, an eight mil extension lead. There's quite hard to find these, they're about 18 pounds each. I bought two of them. One so that I can extend this existing lead when I am charging and using it with this um, the Jackery Explorer 500, but also another one that I am going to cut apart, connect some <laughs> Anderson connectors on there, and then be able to hopefully use this in my Hero camper to complement the solar I have on there as well. So not the end of the world, just a little bit frustrating that they kind of try and lock it in for you only using it with the Jackery without buying which isn't that easy, or making of extension leads, especially at the cost of this panel. It's like over 200 pounds, like 250 pounds or something. So a lot of money, um, but is a good quality uh, product. Just annoying that they've decided to do that. So zip this up and uh, talk to you a little bit more about it. So in terms of weight, again, like it is big uh, and robust. It's about nine pounds, so it weighs about four kilograms. So not actually too bad to be lugging around. If you pop this open, that's another thing that um, Jackery have done with the solar panels. So magnetized at the top here, which helps keep it um, closed. You can see these solar panels are quite dark. And if I try and tilt it around a little bit into the, the light in the cave here, a little bit shiny. So they have an ETFE film on top of them, which the previous ones didn't have. And that helps basically keep them clean, make them a little bit more dust and dirt. Um, resistant. That shiny surface though does also have a little bit of an impact on their solar efficiency I think. So they're still 23% efficient which is pretty good um, but I don't think they're quite as efficient as the version 2 because of this finish. But this finish in my opinion is better. It's going to be more robust. It means it's going to last um, a lot longer. So it is a good balance of solar performance in combination with durability and longevity. So Again, I think it's good. So these monocrystalline crystal cells are made by Sun Power. So if you know anything about solar, um, and you've seen some of my other videos on my solar setup and stuff, I don't have Sun Power cells because they weren't something that was easily available to me at the time, but these are made by Sun Power. So that's another reason why you're paying some premium money for these uh, this solar panel because they are good cells in here, hence um, the high efficiency. So. That's it, I think, for all we need to talk about in the cave. What we're gonna do when the weather brightens up, we'll go outside, plug this into um, the Jackery Explorer 500. As mentioned in that video, you can't pair more than one of these panels um, with this, so don't bother trying. So only buy one of these if you're gonna be using it with the Explorer 500. We'll see how well it works. I don't expect that we're gonna get 100 watts into this because that's going to be super optimal conditions and I think it's unlikely but it's going to be interesting to see kind of what performance we get both from plugging things directly into the USB adapters in here when we say if we charge an iPhone or something I do have a little monitor um, USB connector so we can see what kind of voltage and stuff we're getting and does that have an impact on the energy that's going into here so obviously MPPT controlled in here I'm assuming it's just a DC to DC uh, charging on those USB ports but I don't know and we will test it so I'll come right back when we're outside and the weather is suitable to see how well this is working maybe later today maybe over the weekend I don't know depends on what the UK weather decides to do okay so it's the following day and the sun is shining for a little bit here in the UK so I've got the Jackery 100 watt panel out so we can have a little look see how it's performing so pop around the back to where we got the Jackery set up see what we're currently getting i'm not sure how much reflection there will be uh, on the screen but hopefully you can see it well enough so we can see here currently getting 77 watts so that's actually not um too bad i think with the current situation i'll do a couple of walk bys so we can see what it looks like when things go overcast and cloudy to give you some idea of how it recovers with that mppt controller okay so just whilst we're waiting I'm trying to see how easy it is for you to see it's gone quite overcast, but we're still getting 27 watts out of the panel, which is 
pretty good considering the sun is right behind the clouds so just goes to show we can still get some generation even whilst it's overcast so we'll just wait for a while for the clouds to pass and then we'll do this proper test so whilst we are waiting for the sun to come out properly again this is the goal zero cable i was telling you about so it's the 30 foot extender 8 mil cable so that's an extender so we've got the nine foot with a jackery as standard so it's going to give us a good extension like i said it's really hard to get hold of these eight mil extension leads so as mentioned earlier i've got two of them and i'll do a separate video as i cut one of these up to make it into uh, an eight mil socket into anderson connector so you can use this solar panel with some other stuff but uh yep all right wait a little bit longer the sun is nearly kind of clearing those clouds but uh i'm still impressed even again pretty dull um, but we're still getting 28 watts of energy so i'm quite impressed with that actually okay so we've got some better sun now so i'm going to show you walking past and hopefully we should see a relatively consistent 76 watts um, going up and down as i walk past now it's not super clear skies and obviously it's not um peak summer or anything but that's a pretty good generation i think so let's uh, see what walk past makes it look like Okay, so walking past now. Okay, so hopefully the panel performed quite well there. And now I'll show you the impact of obviously when using those USB sockets are on the side of the panel. So I see right now 75 watts is fully going into the Jackery for charging. If I plug in my iPhone, you'll see that power drops a little bit. As I see now, power is being shared with the USB sockets and the jackery. So the phone is charging. If I unplug this again, you see it just goes up a little bit. And it's more noticeable at the, the lower uh, power generation so i think right now it has some surplus that's not really impacting the amount of power that can go into the jackery but when it was lower at like say 50 watts when i plugged the phone in there was more of a noticeable input so i feel like we might actually be hitting the threshold of what this panel can provide to the jackery but i don't think it's a, a panel thing so much uh, more as the limitation of this particular version of the jackery Okay, so I think that's it for this test. So the peak we saw here in late March in the UK was 77, 78 watts on a relatively clear day, which I think is pretty impressive. Stay tuned for other videos in the future where I'll mention obviously how well this panel is performing, both again with the Jackery in the height of summer, as well as if I am able to make that cable to make it work um, with my Hero Camper as well, as a, to compensate the existing 150 watt panel that's going to be on there. But I'm really impressed with how it's working. Um, yeah, so it is expensive, but I think it performs well, at least compared to some of the other solar panels that I've tested at these kind of portable fold out kind of offering. So uh, hopefully it's gonna last a long time and be uh, a well performing product. Um, the other thing I just checked is the temperature of the panels. So it's about 36 degrees centigrade. So again, it's not really hot uh, here in the UK today. So that, that's relatively low, I think. Um, for these uh, panels in terms of the heat because they are a bit darker they are going to get a bit hotter I think than some of the the lighter um, panels but again part of that covering is makes it more dust resistant and should increase the longevity of the panels okay so I hope this video helped please like if you enjoyed the video much appreciated feel free to ask any comments or leave any feedback down below in the comments section there's some links in the description if you want to pick up one of these and I'd also appreciate it if you consider subscribing and pressing that bell notification button to be made more aware of future Spectrum Geeks videos. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.